so I just finished、um, texting some of my colleagues about writing comic books because I know I、um, I know I do it, but I want to get like a consensus or a commonality between everybody, their experiences and、um, what got them to start writing to actually do the work and、uh, not just daydream about it, which you know we all do that. So hopefully, this will be、uh, very valuable for you. Oh no 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 that's okay yeah yeah I I'm recording so <laughs> no so so we got oh no well, okay I'm I recorded I'm recording it, so now I have okay I have twenty nine minutes I have twenty nine minutes and then awesome sorry what what was the question again <laughs> so um you started out as an artist I mean you started out at basically top cal right um as an illustrator so what made you transition into writing when you were at DC and Co-writing and did they approach you or did you approach them or how did what was your origin story basically with writing? Yeah, so there's there were a couple reasons for there's what I'd like to think is the reason, and then there's what I think is the actual reason of why DC approached me to write. So you know, a long, a long time ago, every artist、um, at some point early on in in their career. They created. They were creating their own comics, right? And you know, throughout high school, aside from working on portfolios and stuff,、uh, me and a high school buddy of mine, we started like comic book club, and we would write our own stories, right? And we were trying to figure out how to like connect my world with his world. And but you know, when you read a lot of the magazines back then for how to break in, like Wizard or whatever, it seemed like you had to specialize only in one thing. Right, you know, you you couldn't do all three. There were very few that did, and it was very seldomly advertised that way. It was always you're going to be a writer, you're going to be a penciler, you're going to be an inker. Everything felt like it was steps, or, or there was a specific lane you had to choose. And you know, because I was really excited by image and all that stuff, I, I was very interested in art. So I I decided to focus on that because、um, that was the most Physically tangible thing where you could tell whether there was progress or not,、mm -hmm. you know, it's which is a little bit harder with writing, right? So I, I I put that aside for a long time, and um when I started working at Top Cow, yeah, I I just focused on on drawing, and I think there were few instances where I think because I I do focus a lot on my storytelling, and there was this instance where. Um, I had built enough of a relationship and trust with the writer,、uh, David Wall, and he he literally wrote six to eight pages in like one sentence, and it just says, "Yeah, these guys fight. It ends with this person winning," and I broke down the the rest of the sequence, and I'm like, "Oh, this this isn't that hard. Writing's not that hard," <laughs> <laughs> you know.、Um, so I was kind of like, "Okay, well." If it, it just kind of gave me the the taste of being much more involved in it, and then the very first time Brian and I actually worked together on on writing something was、um, this one or two issues of The Darkness, and you know Brian and I are we've been really good friends for such a long time, and I knew that he's always wanted to write and I've always wanted to write, and we just got along really well, you know. And so we were just we would just spitball ideas and stuff like that. So that's my our first writing credit. Even though I don't remember if I was credited for that, because I think you know the the page rates back then were very low. So whenever credits had to be split, the rates were split. And and I I don't remember if I got credit.、Um, I think I did. Maybe not. I don't know. I my memory is very blurry. Um, but yeah, so so Brian and I talked about the story, and then、uh, and then that was that. You know, we we didn't do anything together for a long time because I had moved on to DC, and again I I went back to just focusing on the art. You know, because as as you know, it 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 feels like、um, 
when you're an artist until you get those DC or Marvel books, it it's it doesn't feel like you're you know like seen right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I just focused on that and I, I know that my editors at the time knew that I've always wanted to write, but I've never really expressed it, um, explicitly. I think I was, you know, I was very shy about it, right? You know, on artists wanting to write whatever, right? You know, and I honestly, this is my opinion. I'd like to think that they, they saw something in me and they're like, yeah, this guy's going to write. <laughs> But to be perfectly honest, I think the reason why they asked me to write The Flash was at the time, um, Jeff was going to move on to a different project. He was going to focus on Aquaman. And they, The Flash at that point had been relaunched multiple times. And they wanted, I think they wanted a sense of continuity. And I think they knew that once Jeff left, I would have left. So I actually think it was more of a business decision asking them if I had any interest in writing it. Right. Um, and also my contract was coming up at that time. Right. So I, I, th- I think I had like a lot of leverage <laughs> to ask for things. So I think business wise, two things were happening. One was they wanted continuity on the title and two, uh, my contract was about to expire. Right. And what better way to keep an artist around by giving them an opportunity to write. So they, yeah, so they, they, put that on the table and I said, yeah, I'll, I'll do it on one condition. And they were like, what was that condition? I'm like, well, I would really like my friend Brian to co-write it with me. Right. So I remember giving Brian a call and I'm like, Hey Brian, uh, you know, they're offering me the flash and they're letting me write it. And I asked them if you could write it with me, you know, and it's it's pretty much a done deal, you know? Nice. And he's like, oh, shit. He's like, do we have to pitch or anything? I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Man. You know? Um, I mean, obviously, we eventually developed a pitch, but, you know, I, I think that was, uh, I was... I was the right... in the right place at the right time. And as much as I would like to think that it had something to do with my abilities, I think it was a complete contract play with the writing aspect. I... Now, I would like to think that they were justly rewarded by their risk. Yeah, uh, I, think, I so. think they were. I think, I think you were. I, <laughs> you kept I, working I with them, were. so obviously it was good. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's the origin story of how uh, I started writing, um, at, at least from the business end of things, you know. But I, I think that um, as creatives like us we have to we have to not we have to acknowledge the business side of the whole thing and you may be you could say being at the right place at the right time but you and I know that you had to work to a certain level to get to be at the right place at the right time so um yeah I mean I think my story is the same way not to mention David Wool is the one that got me into this yeah it's kind of cool to hear your side of it um with David like he's he's really good at um bringing in new writers and new artists and stuff, you know, and he's still so helpful. But um, do you feel like you've evolved as a writer because of that experience with uh, Flash? Did you learn a lot from Brian or was it something you kind of took on in your own, like study books and, and other writers while you're working on the Flash? So up to that point, the writing experience that Brian and I had had was the darkness and that was it. <laughs> so I... <laughs> but but here's the thing right like like I think Brian had wanted to write for a long time but but the same thing right with with coloring being the bulk of his income he also said it in the background right um but you know we we read the same things we we read uh, Sid Field um ha, uh, save the cat <laughs> uh no you know I I only read save the cat recently to be honest um I think I you know, here, let me. So the, the main two that uh, Sid Field screenplay, it's it's pretty old. And then Sid Field screenwriter's book. Um, and then obviously Robert McKee. Oh, yeah. Story, that Bible. I think is huge. 
Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I think that's that's the best one. I, I think this one is is the most, like, practical, right? Like, you could write by the numbers using this. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I found with Robert McKee's story is that um, it was more than just teaching me how to write. I realized so much about it was teaching me about life and that like exploded me. Oh, I know, right? It was overwhelming too. Like it, this wasn't, the more I read it and it's like so much of this is life and it's so much of it is understanding life. And even when I, when I started looking at the, the way he structures stories or the way he talks about it, I realized that every success I've had wasn't because I chased what I wanted. It was because I stopped chasing what I wanted. I approached what I feared the most. And ironically, that's where the reward was, you know? And every every time I chased what I wanted, I wanted the flash. I couldn't get it. You know, I didn't get the flash when I wanted it. I got the flash because I did um, adventure comics with Superboy. And that was where I needed to be. And that book was the perfect book to introduce the audience to the ink wash watercolor style that I was doing. Because that that wasn't a fit in any of the other books. But with that book, that was a case of, ah, you know, it doesn't feel like my career is going anywhere. So let me do this book to a character that I didn't really have a lot of, of fan base history with. It was just, you know, I knew it was in the farm and I knew that was the perfect opportunity for me to do, you know, it was, it was the perfect opportunity for me to do this, this art style that I knew would fit with that type of look, you know, and it was a case of, you know, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to stop trying to draw like Jim Lee in order to, (laughs) um, you you know, in order to, to elevate, you know, because once you get a DC, you're like, well, I want to get like a higher tier book. And I I think that if I drew in a much more commercially palatable way, maybe I could get those higher tier books. And it was when I stopped chasing that, that I got the thing that I've been pining for, for a long time. Right. So, yeah. So that's a roundabout way to essentially say that Robert McKee, that book, you're, you're right. It's, it's like a Bible, you know, I, throughout my studio, I actually have quotes uh, on index cards to like look at and remind myself of stuff. That's, I do that too. That's so funny. Um, I actually did. I went backwards. I read Robert McKee first, and I'm like, whoa! It was like it's yeah. like, yeah. and so I was trying to find how to write the script. So I read that book, and then I went back to Save the Cat, and then you know some. I looked through the some of the Sid books, but then like I went back to Robert McKee again. And luckily now he's got YouTube videos. So I'm just, I'm still, I still love like watching his stuff and reading his material. I didn't, I didn't know he had a YouTube video channel. No way. I didn't either. I was like, cause kind of like you, I was digesting all of this, like filmmaking, screenwriting, writing, 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 like all these videos. And, uh, and I found a new one and I'm like, wait, what? And he's got a new book. He's got like three books now. So. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I I didn't know that. Wow. Okay, that's that's a lot to catch up on. Yeah, no, I I I, I read Save the Cat and yeah, it was okay. I I think it was um, it's also very practical, right? It's it's very um. I I think it's a good place to start. Like you said, I think when I read Robert McKee's first, it was too much, you know. Yeah. <laughs> e- even though like it obviously had like some some good actionable stuff there were certain aspects of it that felt like almost philosophical (laughs) oh yeah especially when you're starting out you're like man i might be going a little over my in over my head at at this point because it's you want your characters to have depth but at the same time you almost have to live through a certain level of uh depth and life yourself to understand how to have have that unfold you know I, i mean at least for me that's how it was like my experiences weren't to that level yet where I could just kind of draw out some of these, you have to put so much of yourself in your writing and the characters you create that part of it is like, you can't, you can't hold it in too much. Cause I was, I felt vulnerable when I did that with writing. So I was a little scared cause, and I wasn't letting go. And now I'm older. I'm like, ah, who cares? 
I don't care anymore. And I feel like my <laughs> my writing and my art feels a little bit better. Like you, I stopped chasing those things that I wanted so much and kind of just did my thing. And then I was ready for it later. So I don't know if I'd want to give people that advice. And they're like, oh, okay. But it sounds practical. And that's what most of us went through, you know, was chasing that yeah. thing and then going back and then trying to find a way around it and then getting to where you're at now. And the question is, now that you've gotten basically everything you wanted, um, how do you keep going? Like, do you find that level of passion still? Yeah, so I, I this is going to be a long answer because oh, this no, is by all means, kind of yeah. a, it's, it's a very complicated answer. So technically, the, the last thing that I wrote was Trinity. Um, that was the last time I wrote. And, you know, due to certain circumstances in my personal life, I just felt like here I was in an industry and in a genre where we're writing about hopeful things and, and heroes. And, you know, due to certain events in in our family's life, I I felt like I lost hope in that. How, how could I write about hopeful superheroes where at that point in time, I didn't believe that that type of thing existed. You know, it, it was a very dark place. And I just, yeah, I just didn't, everything just felt like it was, it was all bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, how, how could I write about hopeful superheroes when, you know, life has shown us that it can be extremely horrifying, you know? Um, so I stopped writing. I, I just, uh, I'm like, I'll go back to what's comfortable, which is just drawing. Because with drawing, I don't feel like I have to put so much of myself into it. Um, obviously, there's varying degrees of excitement. Um, but for the most part, drawing, as I'm sure you could feel this way, as, as a professional artist, there's going to come a certain point where drawing is a muscle memory. And the emotions and mental effort can decrease. And it, just by simply moving my hand, some drawing will come. Yeah. But yeah. But with, with writing, it always felt like every work that I've done always had elements of what I was experiencing, right? Um, with The Flash, the entire first arc was, okay, well, he's the fastest man alive, uh, but he also can't be everywhere at once. So the entire conflict of it was The Flash being overwhelmed. And that came thematically because I was overwhelmed by the opportunity of being handed these keys to the flash and I wasn't prepared for it. But back then I had youthful ignorance and energy, right? So to me, the flash was me writing at my rawest and at my least knowledgeable stage in my career. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, enthusiasm can get you very far. Enthusiasm and passion get, can get you very far. And I think it came across in the work. Um, and then as I progressed, when I started working on Trinity, you know, and I became a dad, it started shifting towards certain things that I was experiencing. You know, uh, I remember writing one issue of Trinity where it was literally about Clark Kent talking to, you know, more or less traveling back in time and talking to his dad and his dad was asking him almost for advice of what it's like oh man, how do I take care of this kid? And I'm, I'm prepared. So it was like a real revelation to adult Clark Kent to hear his own dad saying, I don't know what I'm doing as, as a dad, you know? And a lot of that stuff came out of things that in, you know, with comics, it's, it's, um, it, it's a lot of the stuff that, that we write about are inspired by how we feel, but also sometimes I think it can also be sort of, a wish fulfillment of things that that were never done right so the entire issue was a conversation i wished i had had the opportunity to have with my dad so it, it writing just started becoming much more holistic for me and at that point in time i felt like i was hitting my stride and then 
because I was beginning to understand that so much of, of me was in the writing. So, you know, when, when shit happened, what was part of my life, I couldn't even bring myself to put down in a word. So I just done, you know, I can't do it, you know? So, so since then, I, yeah, so I, I, I stopped writing, you know, um, since Trinity, I think I've written one story, which was a Superman short story. Uh, I'm writing a sh another short story right now for DC, but I'm not quite the best person to ask for longevity in writing because I'm just easing my way back in. And ironically, how I found my way back into writing wasn't through comics. It was through these videos, right? And during that time, I, you know, I was like, ah, I, I, I need a new hobby. I need a new creative outlet that is different from all of this. So, you know, I've always been into landscape photography and architectural photography. So I picked up my camera again and, you know, I bought one camera and I was like, okay, I don't, it's an expensive hobby. I'm just going to buy this one camera with a fixed lens and that's it. So that way I don't get into any trouble. And then I really enjoyed the experience. The next thing I knew, I bought another camera <laughs> and I'm like that I can change the lenses on. And then I was like, hey, this has a video function. Oh, okay. Let me turn that on. <laughs> and uh, I got, you know, nowadays it's all about the reviews. So I, I you know, these are expensive things. So I didn't want to buy it without knowing what I was getting into. So I started watching all of these reviews on cameras and I found myself thinking, okay, well this one, I got the information done, but there were certain YouTubers who I gravitated towards their videos, regardless of whether they were reviewing something I didn't care about. And I was like, oh, wait a second. You mean there's more to these YouTube videos besides just reviewing something, right? And then from there, I like, I discovered like, um, Casey Neistat's videos. And I was kind of like, cause before that I thought vlogging was like lame, you know, I'm like, God, oh, this is lame, you know? Oh uh, yeah. But then when I saw his stuff, I'm like, wait a second, you know, holy crap. He's making these like mini movies. There's a three act structure to everything. And you know, I've only been able to implement it recently with, uh, this new series that I started up on YouTube, a work in progress where I'm taking a much more, um, uh, narrative approach. So to be perfectly honest, my way back into writing comics wasn't through writing the short stories that I've been doing at DC. It's through making these videos, right? To me, making these videos, even though they take a long time, they, they take infinitely a shorter time than creating a comic book. That's true. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. And in kind of figuring out a sort of three act structure with these videos and, and writing them out, it started, um, igniting the, the writing aspect of my brain. And then, so as these videos are coming up, my writing in comics is beginning to bubble up again. Right. So, you know, in terms of longevity and keeping things going, I, I, I would say that for anybody who is doing anything for a long time, I think it's really important to find another creative outlet that is completely separate from what you do. Even though ironically, the two things are, are colliding. So I, I almost feel like, am I ruining making videos by having it combined with comics because with, with making these videos, there's, there's no stakes, there's no stakes, there's no pressure, there's no expectations. I'm just making them because they're fun, you know? Yeah, exactly. And with, with comics, there's, there's so much expectations between sales and, and the quality, blah, blah, blah. And right? fans, fan expectations. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. With, with these videos, there's zero expectations and you know, it's, it's a big difference between a comic book that like, you know, 50,000, a hundred thousand people will read 
versus a video that I make that maybe like 2000 people will watch, you know, and to me, there's, there's a sense of like intimacy to them right now in that, um, I, I feel like with, with YouTube, it's triggering this part of my brain of how I used to feel when I was trying to break into comics, you know? Yeah, me too. Where, <laughs> yeah. It, it, it just feels like there's nowhere to go but up because we're at the bottom. Oh, well, yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. Whereas with, with comics, it, it feels like <laughs> I, I just want to, you want to re retain a certain level and not dip below, right? Oh, yeah, so. for sure. Um, I think that's why you and I have so many hobbies. I know you've got like, and there's always a creative outlet for our hobbies. Like there's so many things to do. It's almost overwhelming. I never get bored. But, you know, yeah, you're right. <laughs> There's a lot of expectations. Yeah, I, honestly, in like if if you called me and you said, all we're going to do for two hours is talk about our cameras, I would happily do it. I know, me too. Would, uh, but that's the funny I thing. I would like... happily do it, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I remember I, I went to like some photography convention and I'm like asking someone, hey, does anyone want to come? Nobody wanted to go. So I just went by myself, you know. It felt like, it felt like I remember back then where... I was like, hey, there's this band I want to check out. Do you want to go? And like, nobody wants to go. But then you go, you go anyway. We can make this into a camera review video if you want. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's like you're saying it's, uh, it's helping out with our comic book stuff too. It definitely helps me out because when people ask me questions, I'm kind of forced to think about stuff more without just doing it. Because, you know, I think I, I like stalked you for a day just watching your videos and your interviews just just so that I don't um, ask either the same questions or, yeah. could, you know, get more information about stuff that I want to learn. And it's like, um, yeah, learning how to answer questions and thinking about what your process is. It, it actually teaches me way more than if I was just like yes. doing it myself, you know, I, a thousand, a thousand percent. Like with, with my videos, when I go into it, I can like honestly tell you that I don't know the end yet and I don't know how I'm going to verbalize what it is I'm trying to explain because m often than not, I've never verbalized, I've never verbalized it before. I just, you know, you and I, we just do it, right? We don't really think about it. And I find that the more I talk about my process, the more I learn about what it is that I'm doing. And then the next time that I encounter that, ironically, I'm now approaching it with much more um, efficiency because now I know exactly what's happening, right? Whereas like before I might be doing something completely subconsciously. And then when somebody asks, oh, how do you do this? And then I answer the question and then I'm like, oh shit, that's how I do it. <laughs> so the next time I'm not doing it subconsciously, now I'm doing it very, very consciously, you know? And like with, with a lot of the videos, like, even with the way I try to edit them, right? Like, you know, I'll be honest, my favorite comments, because, you know, my, my channel's still growing, so my, my views are very low. But my the things that really warm my heart is when they're like, oh, man, you know, this, this, the, the editing on this is really good. And ironically, my favorite comments are not the, oh, the art's really cool. It's the ones who connect with the with the narrative of the video you know because then you know as comic book creators it, it always feels like our art is at the forefront and you know for better or worse being an artist writing your own stuff you being the artist will, will always be at the forefront and i always feel like i always feel like there's a handicap on your writing when you're drawing your own stuff. So I feel like reviews will never give you the benefit of the doubt that they may give uh, a writer, you know? So it might be that you might actually be a 10 out of 10 writer, but they'll only give you an eight. It's like, that's why I said you're like a unique unicorn because you know, you don't, you want, because you put a lot of effort into your writing just as much as your art, but because it's a visual medium, I mean, I guess it gets overlooked if you're the same person so, yeah, I mean, and yeah. I'm, I'm willing to claw my way up there. So you get to that point where people respect your writing as well. You know, um, like in Japan, you, you kind of expect the art and the writing or the artist and the writer to be one of the same and also the same caliber. Yeah. You know? 
I know the YouTube videos when people are like, oh, I, I can agree with you. I can relate. It means that whatever story you're trying to tell in the video, even with the art, they actually gravitated towards the way that you put it together and the story that you told, you know, yeah. without the art. Yeah. And, and that's the funny thing because they're like, oh, man, like, how did you learn how to edit the video? I'm like, well, I, I learned the, I guess, the practical things of how to use the software. But every editing trick I'm using is the exact same things I do in comics, right? So, like, I remember having this revelation a long time ago when, when I started doing work outside of comics, um, you know, whether it's illustration work or TV work. And whenever I gave ideas that were things that we instinctually did in comics, I always found that, you know, people were always like, whoa, that's a great idea. We never would have thought of that, you know? And to them, it was like left field thinking, but to us, it's like, oh, gr grade one of comic books have taught you these skills, you know? <laughs> um, it's just the different um, industries, even though they mine a lot of the intellectual properties, you know, with, with movies and stuff, one of the things that I think gets overlooked is the skill set that you learn as a comic book creator because, you know, you're, you know, it's it's beat over like a dead horse with how often somebody says being a comic book creator is like being the right the screenwriter the director the costume designer the lighting blah 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 right you know so that's a tired statement but it's still very true you know that's that's why I started coloring my own work because I I felt like every aspect of of the comic book from the writing to the penciling, to the inking, to the coloring, it adds to the story, you know? And I realized when I started coloring my own stuff, I could enhance the story even more, right? Because typically, especially at the big two, things are colored locally. And, and by that, I mean, if someone's blue, they're blue, right? They're never affected by the ambiance of their surroundings. They're just blue. The sun <laughs> could be setting and they'll just be blue, you know? And with creator on stuff, you know, with clear, I was free to, his skin is pink because this is the, the neon lights, but in, in regular, um, mainstream stuff, whenever I've had the light affect the main character, it's like, well, this is Superman. He needs to just be red and blue, you know, fair enough. Right. It's, it's like, you're doing the most iconic thing, but with, with the creator on stuff, you know, it, it was a lot easier to take like I said, a more holistic approach to everything, right? Where everything is is dictated by the story, not just the paneling, not just the inking, but also the coloring, right? And and it's the same thing, it's the same kind of thing with, with videos, you know? Like I recently did this, um, uh, I don't know what you call it. I, I made this video for Gotham Knights for the release of their game, you know? And the way I filmed the video, I made the lighting exactly the same as the lighting in the art, you know? And so, so yeah, so, so to me, the, the, the marriage of, of the videos and the comic book to me feels very natural because I, I feel like while I'm using all of the skill sets that you and I have learned through comics, but it's being um, done through a different lens uh very much pun intended on that in that <laughs> uh, you know what i mean like instead of using a pencil you were using a camera you know instead of using photoshop you're figuring out how to do lighting and stuff you know it's 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 activating a different part of my brain but also there's some instinctual things that you and i have learned from our day job that can be applied to all these other things and um, I think that's why it's funny that for us to learn how to write comic books, we had to read screenwriting books, yes. basically. Yes. Yeah, more or less, because there's not a whole lot on comic book writing, but they overlap so much, you know. And um, I think that, yeah, I think that if you learn how to write screenplays, you're basically good to go with comic books and vice versa. The transition between the two are pretty easy. And, I mean, drawing comic book panels, it's basically... Uh, what is it called? Um, blocking shots and and you know understanding camera lenses and wide angle yeah. and because and I had to I know this is weird but because I was doing photography and video 
I never thought, or I didn't think until more recently that, oh, if I'm shooting the character from this angle or medium shots, long shots, it's the same as a camera. And if, if I color my own stuff in Photoshop, is it a 1.8 lens that I'm looking at or is it like a 5.6, you know, a 5.6? Right. So for, because I didn't think that way for a while, I wasn't sure. But now I'm like, oh, this is easy. Okay. Just treat it like it's a camera lens and, you know, it'll be, it'll come out that way. Yeah. Honestly, like one of the things I realized is even things like compression, right? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, we can shoot everything uh, with a shallow depth of field and it will look like amazing. But recently I feel like, even though I'm shooting with a very shallow depth of field right now, so I'm, I'm you can't see it, but it's over there. So I feel completely like a hypocrite, <laughs> but because you could do it on an iPhone now, it, I feel like it took away the specialness of it. So now mm -hmm. I, one of the things that I'm super interested in is the, the compression. Cause before I was like wide angle, everything, you know, <laughs> and, yeah. and you can tell, right? Like even in art, right? Like, so for instance, if I put my hands like this on a wide angle lens, this hand is going to look like two, three times bigger than my head, but on a, a longer lens like this one, you know, you could see that the hand is the same size as the head. And you realize that even artists do that and, and they may not have verbalized it, but some artists have an internal compression. Cause you know, like some artists, they'll draw a hand like this, but it, it's not coming out at us. It looks, it looks like yeah, this. Yeah, it's a compression. Yeah, that yeah, would be me. Know? I've, I've like, learned to let go of that. Yeah, but then like, you know, you look at like a, a Joe Mad drawing and it's like, it's almost it's like it's always a an, wide angle lens. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, to the point where it's almost like a fisheye lens or something like that. You know? Oh, I know, I know. I'm trying to be more fisheye and less compression, but you know, we all. Uh, yeah, do. I've been going the opposite. I've I've been obsessed with <laughs> compression. I I I did, I did like a, a photo walk. The the first time I went out with an 18 millimeter, and the next time I came out with like an 85 millimeter, and it's just so much better it's so pretty man like i uh, i use my 70 to 200 for landscape and it just looks different yeah it's so creamy looking and it's oh it's it's pretty yeah no it's it's great i mean honestly i think that uh, i remember i made this video and it's like one of my poorest performing videos but i actually think it's in my opinion it's one of my my most informative and best video where it's it's the one where I'm, I'm talking about um, uh, shot angles for comics. I, I think I, I filmed the entire thing in, in my basement and it's like, how do I make this interesting, right? And I, I filmed it and then it's like, okay, well, this seemed like it has something to do with comic books. And then I took screenshots of the video and made pages out of them. Okay, this is how you would structure this as a comic book. It has a terrible, terrible thumbnail. It's like in black and white. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I haven't, I'm just slowly figuring stuff out. You know, I think it makes a big difference when, when you're in the thumbnail, because I think it gives people like a connection, you know, my fiance, he basically said, oh, you should put yeah. yourself in your thumbnails. You know, it's everybody did that. I don't know why I didn't think to look at other people's thumbnails and I'm like, wow, there's there's always a picture of them and I always gravitate towards it, but I didn't think to ask, oh, yeah. duh. Well, because <laughs> it makes it easy, right? Like when I'm scrolling through what to watch, if I see the person who looks familiar to me, I'm like, oh yeah, I watch the videos all the time. Then I'll... But then if it's like a close up of a pencil, I don't know whose video it is. Oh yeah. And you know, they have those robotic, like, I don't know what you call them, where it's not even a real person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you. You know what I hate are those... Yeah. When there's a new camera and it's like, oh, we're comparing this camera versus this camera. And then I'm like, there's no way they got this footage already. This is a fake channel that's just there to get those that ads. But I mean, honestly, like, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine who does YouTube, like the AdSense stuff, it's just, it's pennies on the dollar, you know, and it's, and it's funny, um, you know, before getting into comics, like, you know, back in the wizard days, do you remember those where it's like artists were like driving vipers and they're like, oh man. Dude, I, I, you know what? I talked to Car uh, Carlos uh, Deanda and yeah. Joe Benitez. They're like, man, we thought we were going to get our vipers and our Labrinians yeah. and we show up and the party's already over. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but so here's the funny thing, right? Like, because, you know, one of the, 
I would say one of the most inspirational thing that got me into comics were not comics. It was aside from the wizard things, it was also like this this documentary, um, Hoop Dreams, you know? And I'm like, man, you know, I'll I'll never be a good basketball player, also like height and all that stuff, you know. Uh but like watching that documentary and seeing these kids like they're doing it because they're trying to like get like a better future and it was also a thing they were passionate about, right? So with comics, the the I'll be honest, the money drew me in initially because I was like, wait a second, you can make money drawing. And at the time that I was trying to break in, that was when the industry like collapsed. You know, nobody oh, was really? making money. And yeah, no, I, I missed the boat, but I realized <laughs> that I still really loved it, you know? So like when the money went away, I still wanted to do it. Right. And I guess the yeah. the advice that you and I have of how to break in now is way different than what we did. I mean, we're still around the same people and we kind of see how it's changed. But being a kid starting now, there's all these advantages, but disadvantages because there's such a, a huge pool of people trying to get in and just, you know, all this attention being put on everybody. So I get that question a lot. Like, how do I break in? I'm like... Well, like me, I don't know. I don't know how you'd do it now um, exactly, but I've seen your videos. Um, I'm going to link to it. But yeah, I mean, what would you say with writing? Because art, I think, is easier to get out there. But with someone who's wanting to be a writer and they don't have any drawing skills, I mean, you know, I, I think David Wool said just find another artist or find an artist to partner with, kind of like what you and I did, but now it's virtual, I guess, right? Breaking in as a writer is probably going to be the toughest thing you could do, you know, um, you know, if, if you look at it in YouTube terms, you could watch somebody do like amazing B roll and you're like, yeah, cool, done, subscribe. But then the more you watch it, you're like, past the B roll, this channel actually really sucks. There's no story. And then every now and then you encounter like, you know, filmmakers like, like Van Neistat you know, who the, the, the quality of the video was not very good, but the story was so good. It's very compelling, right? And, you know, back when you and I were trying to break in, I had to figure things out through reading interviews with artists from magazines. I literally went to the library, see ya, and I, I went to the section letter C to find anything that had comic books, right? And I read how, like, the classic guys broke in, and it was like they had to be in New York. Right. So it, it, everything evolved. Right. Like the, the guys before us, everything was like I was in New York and I and I went up to Marvel or DC and gave them, we can't we couldn't do that. Right. So our version of that was we traveled to conventions and we showed people our work. Right. But the version of that now is. I created the work, I put it out there and they found me. Right. So I actually think that's that's the way to do it now. Now, the difference is when you and I were trying to break in. Um, there were fewer doors and we had to like dig it out. You know, we're like, it, it's like approaching a beach and you know that somewhere buried here is gold and, and you and I are just digging and digging and digging, right? You know, whereas the difference now is you're at a beach, every pot of gold has been uncovered and all of them are <laughs> screaming for your attention, right? And the the true test of it is as you're looking at all of these as you're looking at all of these buckets of gold and coin and you think that that's the stuff that matters what you're looking for is as you're looking across this beach you're looking for the thing that connects with you as a person so now you're like oh look you know you walk over and you don't pick up like a bucket of gold you pick up a fucking like photo of your family or some shit like that, you know, and it connects, right? And it's the same thing with trying to break in now. I, I think that because everybody has a platform now, you know, everybody has a platform, but it's ultimately what you do with it. And I think the more you do it, I'd like to think that at some point you can be discovered, you know, and if you're a writer, yeah, absolutely. Try to find an artist that is upcoming that is also trying to break in. That's, I mean, that's also what what I did. You know, I worked with a writer who was trying to break in, and then we 
kept doing stuff for free together just to get printed. And then eventually we got discovered by bigger publishers, right? So, you know, as a writer, if you can't find an artist, write articles, write blogs, you know, make videos, make video essays, right? Like I'm, I'm sure I subscribe to a lot of video essays, you know, where the essay, the essayist is discussing, you know, the types of tension that Tarantino makes in his film, you know, or whatever, whatever the subject is. Yeah, those are awesome, actually. I love yeah, those. Yeah, exactly. I, I think the the important thing is the act of writing and putting it in a place that people can find it, you know, in whatever form that you decide to choose, right? Look, like I said, I, I, I technically haven't written in, in years, not since Trinity. You know, and I'm finding my way back into writing through these videos because it's accessing the same um, part of my brain and emotion that's triggering like a creative response, you know, and, you know, to say that how I edit and write my videos are not affecting my work is completely false because it absolutely is. Every video that you see me make, every excuse me, every edit that I make in Adobe Premiere, every single thing that I learned th through that, you're going to see it reflected in my comic book work, you know, and, and vice versa, right? So even even still photography, you know, there's there's a narrative in that. That's, that's how you compose a comic book cover. You know, it's telling a story with a single image, not a sequence of it, right? So it's, I, I would say that, confining yourself to just comics as a way to break into comics that model i think doesn't exist anymore i think being a person that is a storyteller and i think that's what it comes down to can you tell a story can you even tell a story orally you know like like when you and i speak right like you don't have to have um a certain eloquence in your language abilities it's it's your ability to understand how you disperse information that's all writing is all writing is i know the ending and i'm the one in, in control of the information and i'm giving you information piece by piece right and if i give you the information in the right order then i'm drawing you in then i'm doing my job as a writer right and if and that the idea of being in control of the information that that isn't just for writing that transcends from writing to drawing it. It transcends from drawing it to coloring it. It transcends from doing comics to making videos, right? It's it, what it ultimately comes down to is that if you want to get into writing comics, you just focus on becoming a good storyteller, right? In whatever it is that you're comfortable with at first. So if what you're comfortable with is telling stories through videos, do it. If what you're comfortable with telling stories is, is making poems, write a poem, you know? And it's, it's just creating something and putting it out there for people to see in whatever platform and don't worry whether people watch it or not. I mean, if I was worried, I would have stopped making videos a long time ago. You know, <laughs> like, you, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, you, you, you look at the discrepancy between Instagram and YouTube. It's, it's a wide chasm, you know, from like a hundred thousand to like, I don't know, 4,000 or whatever. Right. But it doesn't matter. I, I enjoy making it. Right. And I think as aspiring writers or artists, the, the point of it is that to go back to an earlier discussion that we had, the moment, in my opinion, the moment you stop trying to break in and you just start making the stuff, that's when you're gonna break in. Yes, yes, that's awesome. That is, that's the perfect encapsulation of everything we talked about. <laughs> stop, stop worrying about trying to break in and just break in already and just do it. <laughs> yeah.